Hello, I'm Lynn Edwards and I'm a quilt maker. I'm very fond of the Dresden plate block and this I think is a lovely example. 20 sections in it with a lovely spiky edge, although you could have as an alternative a nice rounded edge as well with a, bit, with a central circle on it. Here's a corner, five units used as a fan, which is very nice. And here is the block used alternately up and down to make a really striking border. Now all of these were made with the Creative Grids Dresden Plate Ruler and I'm going to show you all about it and how to use it now. Here's the Dresden Plate Ruler here. If we could extend the narrow end right to a point it would measure 18 degrees and it doesn't mean much to most of us. But what it actually is saying is that 20 of those segments, when joined together, will make that lovely plate. You can have the segments any length you like, up to 9 inches, because from here to here on the ruler is 9 inches. Remember, though, that the segment is only part of the plate. The plate itself will be more than double that width. And so on the instructions, we have given a chart telling you what size segment you need to make what size plate. Right down the middle, you can see all the measurements for the different sizes you might like to choose and the non-slip grip circles on it. Alongside the segment ruler, we have the circle. This is for the centre. It's a three inch finished circle. It'll make the centre nicely. And also, if you want to have a curved end on your segment, we use the ruler for that as well. I've chosen to use a segment that's six inches long and for that I have to cut strips of my various fabrics six inches wide. Now I need five fabrics for this so if you like you can cut five strips all six inches wide and layer them or as many as you can handle so while you cut the segments it's your choice. Here's my six inch deep strip and first of all I'm going to take the ruler and I'm going to move it along to the right hand end with the top of the ruler against the top of the strip and actually that's a six inch mark it is upside down it doesn't matter because it's the start of the whole thing if you're left handed you'll start at that end and I'm going to then cut off the very end because what I want to do is to start with a slanted section I have to turn it round this way because I'm very right handed now my ruler can come down this way round. Now I can see my six the right way up. How very comforting. Put it on like that, matching the cut edge, and cut along. There's my segment. All I have to do now is turn the ruler, cut more, and cut as many as I need for my design. Here's a cut segment and I'm going to show you how to make that lovely spiky end to it. So take the segment itself, the wider end, fold it carefully in half, matching the corners and the edge. And there's a fold at the right, this side here. Now then I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam along there. Like that. There it is stitched. This end is raw edges, this end is a fold. And what I need to do now is trim that fold down because otherwise it's going to add bulk. I'm going to cut that off like that. Don't go any nearer the stitching than about an eighth of an inch. It's not very safe to do that. Take the fan, open it out like that, that way. Run your finger down the seam and press it with your finger open. See how the edge of the seam allowance fits into that top. What I'm now going to do is turn it right side out. Put my thumb inside, finger on the top firmly, flip it over, push that out with my finger. If you need to push it out any more, you can always use a pair of scissors that don't have too sharp a point. Be careful. Just a little more. There it is. I'm going to put it down and make sure that that seam is running right down the middle, not at a slight angle. 
when I turn it over to the right side, the edge of my segment is beautiful, it's finished and it's lovely spiky finish to it. You can see I've done this to all five segments in this fan. This is the back of course. Here they all are. How neat is that? When you've made your segments, we need to join them together. I've joined this piece together and I'm going to show you just how I did it. First of all, I took two pieces and I put them right sides together and I was very careful to match the folded edges, especially where I'm going to sew them. We don't want one sticking up more than the other one. Really match them carefully and pin it. Stitch, uh, sorry, pin right the way along the edge. They have matched those edges as well, ready to stitch. It's a quarter inch seam right the way along there and it's a scant quarter inch. Keep it on the scant side if you can. What you don't want at this end is the starting threads because you don't want them coming into that outside edge. So what I do is this. I start a couple of stitches in and I stitch on the machine towards the folded edge and then back again and then right the way down to the edge at the bottom. You can just go off straight off there. It's only this side that you need to do that double piece because that means when you open it out you have a lovely secure and sharp corner. A word of advice at this stage. 20 segments all joined into a circle you know is quite a lot and it's often the case that when you've got them all joined together it just doesn't lie flat. It's wrong in some way. So now is the chance to check it out. I would suggest you did five joined together like this and when you've done the first five, put them on a cutting board, give them a good press, line up the cut edge with that one with a line on the board and the cut edge with that one with a line on the board and make sure that those five segments will fit into a quarter of your block like that. If they don't, then possibly you've got to look at your quarter inch seam, try steaming it out. This is where I do use steam to spread it more. You might even have to slither the seams in a little towards the centre. That won't matter, just a little bit, it's just cosmetic, but you need to get it right at that stage for each of your four quarters before you join them and that way you won't have any nasty surprises. Once you've got your four quarters joined together and you're happy with your block and it's lying flat on the table, the only thing left then is the centre. This is what we use a circular shape from Creative Grids with. You lay that on the fabric, hold it in place, it won't slip, and you cut with a small cutter all the way round to create your fabric circle. Now, this is not just the circle of fabric. Stuck onto it here is a double layer of freezer paper. That freezer paper has wax on one side, but it's quite flimsy. So the trick is you take two layers of freezer paper and you first put one down like that and you iron another piece onto it in layers, not both waxy sides together, but in layers like that. When you iron that on the ironing board, it'll stick, but it won't matter, it's only wax. So you peel off your double layer and you cut your lovely, thick, firm circle. That then is positioned in the middle of the wrong side of your circle fabric and ironed on, nice and firm. Now what I do is I'm going to make that edge more interesting. Watch this. This is spray starch. I'm going to spray some starch into the lid to make liquid. An ordinary paintbrush, I can now dip it into the starch and I can starch all the way around that edge, getting it really wet. Oh, it smells lovely too. I love it. Nice and soggy. Make sure that you test that first. Some fabric, you know, you'll get a little watermark if it's a pale fabric. Just check that it's going to be all right. So it's nice and damp. Then you get to work with your iron and you iron the edge over with the side of the iron like that. Try not to get any pleats in it. 
all the way around until it looks like that one. Now this is not glue, it's not stuck to the freezer paper, that is just stiff with starch. So it's lovely and firm and at this stage you can get in there, take the, lay the double layer of freezer paper out, you've got this lovely circle, look at that, and you can position it onto your block and you're in business. The only thing left to do is to applique your lovely, lovely Dresden plate on a piece of background fabric. And because that edge is all finished, how easy that is. Sewing machine, decorative stitch, blind hemming, beautiful hand stitching, whatever you really like to do. The same with the centre, of course, and then it's done. If you prefer to do the traditional curved edge to your Dresden plate, there are full instructions that come with the ruler and the circle is what you use for that outer curve.